So I mm -hmm. do believe that AI systems, f for them to integrate into human society as it is now, have to have a sense of agency. So there has to be a mm -hmm. individual because otherwise we wouldn't relate to them. We could engage certain kinds of individuals to make sense of them for us and be almost like, did you ever watch uh, Star Trek? Uh, like Voyager, like there's the Volta who are like the interfaces, the, the ambassadors for the Dominion. Um, we may have uh, ambassadors that speak on behalf of these systems. They're like the, the Mentats of Dune maybe or something like this. I mean, we already have this to some extent. If you look at the biggest sort of, I wouldn't say AI system, but the biggest cybernetic system in the world is the financial markets. It runs outside of any individual's control. And you have an entire stack of people on Wall Street, Wall Street analysts to CNBC reporters, whatever. They're all helping to communicate what does this mean? You know, like a Jim Cramer, like running around and yelling and stuff. Like all of these people are part of that lowering of the complexity there to meet sense, you know, to help do sense making for people at whatever capacity they're at. And I don't see this changing with AI systems. I, I think you would have ringside commentators talking about all the stuff that this AI system is trying to do over here, over here, because it's a, it's actually a super intelligence. So if you want to talk about humans interfacing, making first contact with the super intelligence, we're already there. We do it pretty poorly. And if you look at the gradient of power and money, what happens is the people closest to it will absolutely exploit their distance for um, personal financial gain. Mm -hmm. So we should look at that and be like, oh, well, that's probably what the future will look like as well. But um, but nonetheless, I mean, we're already doing this kind of thing. So in the future, we can have AI systems, but you're still going to have to trust people to bridge the sense-making gap to them. See, I don't, I, I just feel like there could be of like millions of AI systems that have, um, have agency. So you have, when you mm -hmm. say one super intelligence, super intelligence in that context means it's able to uh, solve particular problems extremely well, but there's some aspect of human-like intelligence that's necessary to be integrated into human society. So not financial markets, not sort of weather prediction systems, or I don't know, logistics optimization. I'm more referring to things that you interact with on the intellectual level. Yeah. And that I think requires, there has to be a backstory there has to be a personality. I believe it has to fear its own mortality in a genuine way. Like there has to be all many of the elements that we humans experience that are fundamental to the human condition, because otherwise we would not have a deep connection with it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think having a deep connection with it is necessarily going to stop us from building a thing that has quite an alien intelligence aspect. Sure. Um, so another, now the other kind of alien intelligence on this planet is octopuses or octopuses. Octopodes, or whatever you want to call them, octopi. Octopi, yeah. There's a there's a little controversy as to what the plural is, I guess. But I, um, I, I an look octopus, forward to your letters. Yeah. <laughs> an octopus, um, you know, it really acts as a collective intelligence of eight intelligent arms, right? Its arms have a tremendous amount of neural density to them, and I see if we can build. I mean, just let's let's go with what you're saying. If we build a, a singular intelligence that interfaces with humans that has a sense of agency so it can run the cybernetic loop and develop its own theory of mind as well as it's a theory of, of action. All these things, I agree with you that that's the necessary components to build a real intelligence, right? There's gotta be something at stake. It's gotta make a decision. It's gotta then run the OODA loop. Okay, so we build one of those. Well, if we can build one of those, we can probably build 5 million of them. So we build 5 million of them. And if their cognitive systems are already digitized and already kind of there, mm -hmm. we stick an antenna on each of them, bring it all back to a hive mind that maybe doesn't make all the individual decisions for them, but treats each one as almost like a neural neuronal input of a much higher bandwidth and fidelity, going back to a central system that is then able to perceive much broader uh, dynamics that we can't see. In the same way that a phased array radar, right? You think about how phased array radar works. It's just sensitivity it's just radars, and then it's hypersensitivity and really great timing between all of them. And with a flat array, it's as good as a curved radar dish, right? So with these things, it's a phased array of cybernetic systems that'll give the centralized intelligence a uh, much, much better, a much higher fidelity understanding of what's actually happening in the See, environment. But the more power, the more understanding the central superintelligence has, the dumber the, uh, the individual like fingers of this intelligence are, I think. I think not you, necessarily. I, I, in my, in my sense, so <laughs> I don't see what a, has to be. This argument, there has to be the experience of the individual agent has to have the full richness of the human-like experience. You have to be able to be driving the car in the rain, listening to Bruce Springsteen, and all of a sudden, 
break out in tears because remembering some some something that happened to you in high school. We can implant like those memories if that's really needed. But now, no, no. I'm, but the I, central agency, like I guess I'm I'm saying for for in my view, for intelligence to be born, you have to have uh, a decentralization. Like each one has to struggle and reach. Hmm. So each one in the excess of energy has to reach for order as mm -hmm. opposed to a central place doing so. Have you ever read like some sci-fi where um, there's like hive minds? Uh, like the Werner Vinge, I think has uh, one of these. And then um, some of the stuff from, um, uh, yes, yeah, on the Commonwealth saga, the idea that uh, you're an individual, but you're connected with like a few other individuals telepathically as well. And together you form a swarm. So if you are, I would need to ask you, what do you think it is the experience of if you are like, well, a Borg, right? If you are one if you're part of this hive mind, outside of all the aesthetics, forget the aesthetics, internally, what is your experience like? Because I have a theory as to what that looks like. The, the one question I have for you about that experience is how much is there a feeling of freedom, mm -hmm. of free will? Mm -hmm. Because I obviously, as a, as a human, very biased, but also somebody who values freedom and biased, it feels like the experience of freedom is essential for um trying stuff out to being to being creative and doing something truly novel which is at the core of yeah the well i don't think you have to lose any freedom when you're in that mode because i think what happens is we think we still think and i mean you're still thinking about this in a sense of a top down command and control hierarchy which is not what it has to be at all um i think the experience so i'll just you know show my cards here i think the experience of being a robot in that robot swarm a robot who has agency over their own local environment that's doing sense making and reporting it back to the hive mind. Mm -hmm. um, I think that robot's experience would be one uh, when the hive mind is working well, it would be an experience of like talking to God, right? That you essentially are reporting to, you're sort of saying, hey, here's what I see. I think this is what's going to happen over here. I'm going to go do this thing because I think if I'm going to do this, this will make this change happen in the environment. And, and then, and, God, she may tell you, that's great. And in fact, your your brothers and sisters will join you to help make this go better, right? And then she can let your brothers and sisters know, hey, you know, Peter is going to go do this thing. Would you like to help him? Because we think that this will make this thing go better. And they'll say, yes, we'll help him. So the whole thing could be actually very emergent. The, the sense of, you know, what does it feel like to be a cell in a network that is alive, that is generative? And I think actually the feeling is serendipity, that that there is random order, not random disorder or chaos, but random order. Just when you need it to hear Bruce Springsteen, you turn on the radio and bam, it's Bruce Springsteen, mm -hmm. right? That feeling of serendipity, I feel like um, this is a bit of a flight of fancy, but every cell in your body must have, like, what does it feel like to be a cell in your body? When it needs sugar, there's sugar. When it needs oxygen, there's just oxygen. Now, when it needs to go and do its work and pull, like as, as one of your muscle fibers, right? It does its work and it's great. It contributes to the cause, right? So this is all, again, a flight of, flight of fancy. But I think if, as we extrapolate up, what does it feel like to be an independent individual with some bounded sense of freedom? All sense of freedom is actually bounded, but it, with a bounded sense of freedom that still lives within a network that has order to it. And I feel like it has to be a feeling of serendipity. So the cell, there's a feeling of serendipity, even though... It has no way of explaining why it's getting oxygen and sugar when it gets it. So you have to, each individual component has to be too dumb to understand the big picture. No, the big picture is bigger than what it can understand. But isn't that an essential characteristic of the individual is to be too dumb to understand the bigger picture? Like not dumb necessarily, but limited in its capacity to understand. Because the mo okay. The moment you understand, <laughs> I feel like that leads to, if you tell me now, that there's some bigger intelligence controlling everything I do. Intelligence broadly defined, meaning mm -hmm. like, you know, even the Sam Harris thing, there's no free will. If I'm smart enough to truly understand that that's the case, mm -hmm. that's gonna, I don't know if I- We have a philosophical breakdown, Yeah, right? Because we're in the West and we're pumped full of this stuff of like, you are a golden, fully free individual with all your freedoms and all your liberties and go grab a gun and shoot whatever you want to. No, it's actually, you don't actually have a lot of these, you're not unconstrained, but the areas where you can manifest agency, 
you're free to do those things. You can say whatever you want on this podcast. You can create a podcast, right? Yeah. You're not, you're, I mean, you have a lot of this kind of freedom, but even as you're doing this, you are actually, I guess where the, the, the denouement of all this is that we are already intelligent agents in such a system, right? In that one of these, these like robots of one of 5 million little swarm robots or one of the Borg, they're just posting an internal bulletin board. They're, I mean, maybe the Borg cube is just a giant Facebook machine floating in space and everyone's just posting <laughs> on there. They're just posting really fast. And like, oh yeah. It's called the metaverse now. The net's called the metaverse. That's right. Here's the enterprise. Maybe we should all go shoot it. Yeah, everyone upvotes and they're going to go shoot it, right? But we already are part of a human online collaborative environment and collaborative sense-making system. It's not very good yet. It's got the overhangs of zombie sense-making institutions all over it. But as that washes away and as we get better at this, we are going to see humanity improving at speeds that um, it, are unthinkable in the past. And it's not because anyone's freedoms were limited. In fact, the open source, I mean, we started this with open source software, right? The collaboration, what the internet surfaced was the ability for people all over the world to collaborate and produce some of the most foundational software that's in use today, right? That entire ecosystem was created by collaborators all over the place. So these online kind of swarm kind of things are not novel. It's just, I'm just suggesting that future AI systems, if you can build one smart system, you have no reason not to build multiple. If you build multiple, there's no reason not to integrate them all into a collective sense-making um, substrate. And that thing will certainly have emergent intelligence that none of the individuals and probably not any of the human designers will be able to really you know, put a bow around and explain. But it, in some sense, would that AI system still be able to go like rural Texas, buy a ranch, go off the grid, go full survivalist? <laughs> like, can you disconnect? <laughs> from the hive mind? You may not want to. So to be an effective, to be intelligent. You have access to way more intelligence capability if you're plugged into 5 million other really, really smart cyborgs. Why would you leave? So like there's a word control that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So oh. it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like control, like over over uh, overbearing control. It's it's just I think systems. Well, this is to your point. I mean, look at look at how much how uncomfortable you are with this concept, right? I think systems that feel like overbearing control will not evolutionarily win out. Got I think it. systems that give their individual elements the feeling of serendipity and the feeling of agency that that will um, those systems will win. But that's not to say that there will not be emergent higher level order on top mm -hmm. of it. And that's the thing. That's the philosophical breakdown that we are staring right at which is in the Western mind, I think there's a very harsh, sharp delineation between explicit control, you know, Cartesian, like what is the vector? Where is the position? Where is it going? It's completely deterministic. And kind of this idea that things emerge. Everything we see is the emergent patterns of other things. And there is agency when there's extra energy. 